Hello everyone and welcome back. So uh, we worked a little bit on figuring out the direction of our structural elements. We started with the secondary ones, worked on then the girders, then on the columns. What I wanted to chat about before moving on, say how to frame around stair openings, was this. If we keep on figuring this out, the direction of our open web steel joists, girders, and so on, what happens column to column that is not a girder, right? So our girders are going this way, we figured out in this case, and if you're not sure how we came up with that, go watch the previous video. But what's happening here along this grid line between this column and that column, or here along this grid line between this column and the exterior CMU wall? Same here, same there, right? Well, you have two options. You have to brace this column against that column, right? They need to be connected. That's a good way to do it. There are a number of ways to do it, and a lot of them are good ways to do it. I'm going to give you a couple. I'm going to give you two, okay? Method one, as you're carrying the open web steel joist, right, throughout, you can simply install at this location a very special open web steel joist. Okay? It's an open web steel joist that has a so-called moment connection. And by that I mean moment, spelled as such. Moment. Okay? That's method one. And I'll show you in a moment what this special open web steel joist looks like that is going from column to column, like this. Okay? That's method one. Method two is you take a smaller beam and replace and connect these column to column with simply a smaller beam, say if you've been given a smaller beam size. So another W shape, like that a smaller kind, okay? And that's just to ensure the stability of, of the columns going this way, okay? It's a good construction practice, okay? So if you have a smaller W section, you can put a W section here to here, and then use some of the details I either provided you or the ones that you can find on chapter 19 of the third edition of your textbook for an idea of how to connect then this smaller W section to the web of your columns. Or, if we choose to use an open web steel joist to connect those two columns, use a moment connection. And here's what it looks like, okay? I'm gonna have to erase this a little bit, but luckily you can go find how we got here on the previous video. So, Okay. So I'm going to take a moment maybe to sketch the columns here. Okay. I'm not doing justice to the right orientation of these columns. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, maybe I should. If they're I beams, if they're I section, W sections, then they should look like this. And your orientation that is meant for it. Okay. There's another one here. And the orientation. You get to see the top and bottom flanges. Maybe? No, no. Sorry. Let me try this again. Okay. If we're looking at these columns, they look like this, right? And because you're seeing the flange for it, they look like this in elevation because they see the flange for it. And when you're connecting the open web steel joist between them, typically an open web steel joist looks like this, right? It looks kind of like this. Right? There's a top cord, a bottom cord, and a whole bunch of triangles to connect, the webs to connect the top cord and the bottom cord. However, if this is a moment connection, that means that for this one open web steel joist between columns, the bottom cord extends this way 
it extends this way to actually connect as well to the column. Okay? Now, to do it a bit more justice, the way that this would look, this column, actually, right, we're seeing the flange, and the web is kind of hidden behind it like this. Okay? And this top cord connects to the web, right? It's just hidden behind. And same for this bottom cord. This bottom cord continues, and it's just hidden behind the flange like this. Same here, I'm going to draw the web of this eye shape, because it's hidden, we're only seeing the... Okay? So then this top cord is solid, but from your point of view, it continues behind here until it connects to the web, and it continues, the bottom cord also continues until it hits the web. Okay, so just to give you a, a better view, the way that we had oriented these columns was like this in this case, right? We had them like that. Right? So if you're looking at these columns, not in plan view, but in elevation view, you would see a long column and when you're looking at it, you're only seeing this face, right, the flange. That's why this is a solid face. And the web here is hidden from you because you can't see it when you're looking this way, right, at ground level. And all you would, that's why it's hidden here. The open web steel joist, the moment open web steel joist, top and bottom cord would connect to the web there, okay? So those are my recommendations for what to do there. Let's talk a moment then about how to frame around the stairway. The first thing you have to do when you're framing around the stairway is first figure out what direction your secondary structural elements are going. Remember, open web steel joist or the beams, the beam joist to get uh, repeated. So let's say the open web steel joist for this portion of the building go north-south, okay? So that's true here as well. So if they go north-south, that means that your open web steel joist here go north-south, right? So, and I'm just being uh, extra careful about doing this. That means that there is an open web steel joist here, an open web steel joist here, an open web steel joist here, and so on and so forth. The problem, though, is that open web steel joists here, they can't continue all the way to the end because this is an opening. That's where your stairs go, right? So you do have open web steel joists here. They're just shorter. But the problem is, how do we make sure that this opening is actually there and supported? You can't just punch a hole. You have to build a skeleton in the structure of that floor so that that opening is properly supported. So here's how you do it. You start first with the direction of your secondary structural elements, okay? So the direction is going like this. So then I go look at my opening for the stairway and I'm gonna place a secondary structural element right here, okay? That's where it goes. So that's gonna be the last one, full length, it's going to be right at the edge of that opening. Okay? Then I place another one right here, like that. Okay? So this again is another element that goes from this one to that one. And then the rest of my open web steel joists are actually smaller, they're shorter by that I mean. Okay? So again, Open web steel joist here, open web steel joist here, open web steel joist here. All of these are going to be open web steel joist. Now these here, you could make them open web steel joist, these two. But I don't recommend it. And that's because if you remember from our lecture on the introduction of structural steel structures, open web steel joists are not good with point loads. 
Okay? I mean, you can build them correctly, but that's not their point. That's not what they're there for. A better way to do it would be if these were actually W sections. Yes. Because this here is better suited. W sections are better suited for uh, non-uniform loads if you select them correctly. Okay? So my recommendation then for these two elements would be using W sections. So say if you've been given a smaller W section, that's the one you want to use here, like this. I'm just using the same pattern I use for W sections for the girders, okay? Just a smaller one. Same for this. I recommend that this be a W section right here. Okay, to frame your wall. Pardon me, to frame your stairway opening. So what you have to do then is look at the proper connection detail between this W section then and this girder, which you can find again, chapter 19. I think it's somewhere figures 1910 to 1913, but look at all of chapter 19 and the other resources I posted for you. Similarly, you have to look at these connections here between this W section and that W section. Okay? So that has to be done carefully. I guess if you're being asked to do that by your working drawings professor. But that would be my recommendation. Okay? Open web steel joists everywhere except here and here where you make W sections. Now if you must use open web steel joists here and here, I recommend that you double up or triple up, but double up should work these ones here. So by that I mean, take the open web steel joist you're told you're going to be using here and put two of them side by side to be stronger, right? To make this one and two of them side by side there to make that one. But again though, I don't recommend it because open web steel joists of this kind they have to be custom made, right? They're not the same ones that you're using here. All right, so we'll take a break, and then when we come back, we'll look at maybe sizing the depth of structural elements given the span, okay? So we'll look at secondary structural elements, primary structural elements in beams, and maybe open web steel joists. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back.